Ever since the launch of OpenAI's ChatGPT in 2022, the artificial intelligence market has been growing and so has the semiconductor sector as the central driving system. Last week, global and domestic firms alike unveiled their latest AI chip technology as related chip race heightens. Our business correspondent Moon Hyun joins us in the studio to tell us more. Welcome, Hyun. Good evening, Jungmin. Evening, uh, Hyun. So, what is the global semiconductor market looking like at the moment? Well, Jungmin, it's easier if you think about the semiconductor industry in two different categories: so the memory and the non-memory chips. Memory chips are those that store information, and there are different kinds of non-memory chips, such as logic chips. You've probably heard terms like CPU, GPU, and NPU, but they're essentially different types of chips that serve different functions, such as visual display or deep learning, that are essential in AI systems. So with the boom in the AI market, non-memory semiconductors are riding on a high. The global semiconductor market was at nearly 600 billion US dollars in 2022. And according to data from the Korean Institute for Industrial Economics and Trade, memory chips accounted for just under 24% of global sales. Non-memory chips, on the other hand, took more than a three-quarter portion of that pie. It's worth noting that AI systems use both logic and memory chips, so it's not just about the lack of demand for memory conductors. Non-memory chips accounted for the majority in terms of sales because they're a lot more expensive than memory chips. This poses something of a dilemma for South Korea's chip industry, as while South Korea is the market leader for memory chips with more than a 60% global market share, it accounts for less than 5% in the non-memory chip sector. This is then mean that South Korea is lagging far behind in the AI chip industry. Oh, Changmin, that's actually a very good question because recent developments have actually seen South Korea jumping on the AI chip bandwagon. And the market leader in AI chips at the moment is US firm NVIDIA with around an 80% market share and saw its revenue almost triple on year in three months up until January. But just last week, the California-based firm unveiled its latest new chip architecture model called Blackwell. So that these two, these two sides of the Blackwell chip have no clue which side they're on. There's no memory locality issues, no cache issues. It's just one giant chip. So the new chip claims to be 30 times faster at performing tasks than its predecessor, and that NVIDIA's major customers such as Google and OpenAI are expected to start using it later this year. But in the same week, South Korean tech giant Samsung Electronics also introduced its first AI chip, the Mach 1. The new chips will be supplied to the South Korean online platform Naver by the end of the year, prompting it to reduce reliance on NVIDIA for AI chips. But it's difficult to say that the Ma1 is direct competition for NVIDIA's Blackwell chips as they bring different things to the table. In terms of function, NVIDIA's chips are designed for both AI training and inference, whereas Samsung's chips are more focused on the inference aspect that runs live data through a trained model to make new predictions or conclusions. So Blackwell needs a high bandwidth memory chip that allows faster transfer rates. But with the Mach 1, Samsung Electronics claims it will be set up with a low power memory chip, which means that it will be a lot cheaper than those using an HBM. Hedion, what can be done to help domestic firms gain ground in the AI chip race? So in countries such as the US, financial grants are given to local companies to you know, help them gain an edge in the market. And just last week, the US Department of Commerce offered up to $8.5 billion to advance Intel's commercial semiconductor projects. But in South Korea, experts say that owing to structural differences in the industry, just providing funding support won't help, and a long-term plan needs to be established to help domestic companies. And here's what one expert said. Problems with labor shortages and protecting new technologies have emerged recently in South Korea, so tackling those issues will be more important than any financial concerns. This sentiment was reflected in a recent meeting with industry leaders and the Ministry of Economy, Finance, where companies mentioned a need for government support in introducing domestic AI technology in the public sector and easing regulations on AI learning data security. All right. Thanks for your report today, Hedion. Thank you for having me.